the observable universe is about 93 billion light years across. That means in any direction from Earth, we can see objects as far as 47 billion light years away. At that distance is something called the surface of last scattering, or more commonly, the cosmic microwave background. Now we can't see behind that. At the time that that light was emitted, material in the universe was so hot that it was a plasma, and plasmas are totally opaque to radiation, which means nothing that was going on before that time was able to travel freely through space and reach us billions of years later to make an imprint. We just see a sort of foggy wall as we look out, which represents that boundary. Now numbers are one thing, but what I really wanted to do in this video is to try and give you a more intuitive sense, a way to internalize what these distances mean. After all, 90 billion light years is really not something that we can conceive of, even as a matter of metaphor or proportion. It's just so much larger than anything that we deal with that we have no way of understanding what it really means without, in a certain sense, seeing it. So I'm going to use Celestia to fly through a simulation of some of the known objects at correct distances from Earth. See as you follow along if you can just keep in mind how much space we're putting behind us and how much space is between the objects we're seeing. Let's start by getting an idea for the size and the scale of the universe as we know it. So this, of course, is the planet Earth, and in the backdrop, the Milky Way. Now I'm going to back out a bit to give you a sense of scale of the Earth compared to the solar system. We're leaving the plane of the solar system now. We're moving several multiples of the speed of light, which of course is physically impossible, but these sort of speeds are necessary to really see any motion, just because the objects we're dealing with are so large and the distances are so vast. All right, let me turn off the orbits, and now we are just floating in a sea of dots. The biggest one, of course, uh, and the sustaining cause of life in our little corner here is the Sun. I'm going to leave the solar system now. To do this we're going to have to move extremely fast. I have to run the simulation in excess of five light years per second before you're even going to see any of these dots move. So I'm moving now at ten light years per second about. You can see at last we're, we're moving forward we're currently about 200 light years from the planet Earth. And the stars are just everywhere. They're like particles floating in the water. Everywhere we see all these dots, each of them a star, each of them containing a whole solar system with unknown mysteries. We're flying at 100 light years per second now. And I bet you couldn't find home if you had to. But let's back out even further. Keep these scales in mind as we move. So everything we were just seeing, every one of those little dots we were flying through exists in this tiny little circle, in this tiny little portion of what we call the Milky Way. This is our home galaxy. You can imagine there are billions and billions more stars spread throughout this galaxy. We're currently perched 50,000 parsecs from the sun, which is about 160,000 light years. And even though it looks like we're holding still, we're moving at about a thousand light years a second. So these green dots I've just turned on, these are all other galaxies, or globular clusters, or other phenomenon. Each of these could have as many stars as Milky Way. Some more, some less. But you can see every direction we look in the sky is just filled with these things. So let's fly out and see, see what we can find. Now, even at a few hundred thousand light years per second, we barely get any movement, so I'm going to jump us up to three million light years a second. And now you can see, once again, we're submerged in a sea of moving dots, this time of entire galaxies at distant scales just unbelievable.
Now I'm flying towards a random galaxy that I've picked out, IC 4450. This, this galaxy is about 30% larger than the Milky Way. It's coming into view now. There it is. Looking at it a little bit from the side. I'll try and fly around it here so that we can get a little bit more of a front view. Now try if you can. Keep in mind what you had as we looked at the Milky Way. Billions and billions of tiny specks. What you're seeing here is even larger. And this is just one out of all of those green labels. Just one example of another galaxy. Who knows what planets or what life forms might live all the way out here. Now I wonder, can you spot home if you had to? We're about 120 million parsecs from home. If you were to jump on a light beam, you would not get home in your lifetime. You would just sit out here in space watching what appeared to be unmoving dots. Now everything we're seeing here, this is just a small portion of what we believe to be the universe. This is just the portion that we've plotted out, that we understand a little bit about, uh, and that we've pumped into the simulations like these. And there she is, the Milky Way. From here in this tiny little rock, this little speck in the middle of nowhere, we've been able to look out into the sky and come to understand so much, not only about uh, where we are, but why we're here and what the material is that surrounds us and that glows at us from the heavens. Thanks in an enormous part to the technologies and the innovations that we've painstakingly acquired over a very, very long career of science.